All right, in the last video, I talked about the basics of circumelling, and we called the X0, Y0 the center of the hole. We used a two inch diameter hole, half inch end mill, and it's really easy to come up with your absolute X and Y values when the center of the hole is X0, Y0. So this is basically what the code looked like on our initial move before we arc into the circle we activate our cutter comp, we come all the way around, then we arc back out at the top of the circle, and then on our last move, we cancel cutter comp. Now, those were really easy numbers to calculate because X0, Y0 is in the center of the hole, but as soon as you have a hole that is away from the origin, let's say you have multiple holes in your part, you would have to recalculate every X and Y location, even though the hole size is the exact same. Okay. And then if you have multiple holes in your part, all the same size, you would have to rewrite the code for every circle. So that is if you write your code in absolute values. So we're going to talk about simplifying this by writing incremental values for the X and Y coordinates. So let's take a look and see how that works. All right, so we're going to start at the top of the program. We got our program number. We're going to use tool number one, which is a half inch end mill. We got our safety line. And the first hole that I'm going to show you is going to be using absolute values, just like we saw in the previous video. We call up our tool, turn on the spindle, and we wrap it to G90, G0. G54, X0, Y0. So we wrap it to that location. We call up the tool offset. We wrap it to point one above the part. Then we feed inside the hole to a depth of Z minus 0.5. Okay. Then the first move we make is G1, G41, D1. So that activates cutter comp. And we stop at Y0.5 right before we arc in. To our circle and notice each value is at a distance away from the XY origin which is in the center of the circle so notice the Y value on the next line is going to be larger okay the Y.750 at the time that we engage with our circle then from there it's a J minus 0.75 to complete the circle all the way around the G3 is modals therefore it knows to do a complete circle, come back to that same point, and then we arc out on the next move, and notice our Y value becomes smaller again, and then even smaller once we move back to Y0, where we cancel cut a comp on our linear move. So now I'm gonna use incremental code, doing the same exact circle, so now notice the difference in the values in incremental mode. So first of all, I'm gonna move up to Z1 inch, wrap it back down to Z.1, and this time I'm going to feed to Z minus 0.4. So now, where do I activate incremental mode? Well, it's on the very first line, once you're down inside the hole. You need to stay in absolute mode all the way until you're at the right depth, okay? Because the, the depth is an, needs to be an absolute value or distance from the top of the part. Okay, so only once you're inside the hole do you actually switch to incremental mode. So the first move we make is still a linear move. On that line we turn on our cutter compensation and the total distance traveled to the lead-in move is still Y.5. But now every move thereafter you're going to calculate the actual distance traveled for each move. So we're going to do a G3 next, and that is the lead-in move. Now notice, on the previous segment, that was a, a Y750, because that is the absolute value away from the center of the hole. In this case, since we're doing an incremental move, the total distance in Y moved from our Y.5 is 250 thousands. Now, we did an arc, and we did that using a G3 counterclockwise arc. And the distance from that start point to the center point of that arc is still a 0.125 distance. Okay, so that stayed the same. Now, 
to go all the way around we have to tell the machine where is the center point of the radius that we're going to be swinging so the distance from the point that we are at now to the center point of the radius is still minus 0.750 so that is the same okay it is not until we complete that move that we're making a incremental distance move which is a total distance of y minus 0.250 because I moved in the minus direction a total distance of 250 and the center point of the radius that I was swinging is from the start point 125 thousandths to that center point I hope that makes sense then we have one move left and that's going back to center so that is a half inch distance so we're going to move not to y0 but a total distance of a half inch back to the center of that circle and on that linear move we're canceling cutter comp so that is how incremental values get you the same toolpath now if I look at it at a 3d perspective you can see I used minus 0.5 on the first absolute move and then minus 0.4 you so you can see that those tool paths are laying right on top of each other see that so you get the exact same results one is using absolute values and the other increment values now now let's go on and let's go to the hole that is at 8 inches in X and minus 3 inches in Y away from this hole now before we move on to another hole obviously we have to come out of this hole we are still sitting at Z minus 0.4 so to wrap it to a clearance plane of Z 1 inches first of all we're gonna have to change back to absolute mode so on the next line G90 G0 Z1 inch we wrap it out of the hole having traveled a total distance of 1 inch 400 because we were minus 400 thousandths and we wrap it out to a clearance plane of Z1 inch because we are in absolute mode again so once we are in absolute mode we wrap it to the next hole location which is at x 8 inches y minus 0.3 so we're going to complete that move I'm going to zoom out so we can see that so you can see that's the hole away from the other and now we're going to use the exact same incremental code to machine this circle so we are now on location x8 y minus 3 we stay in absolute mode until we are completely inside of the hole okay so wrap it to z.1 now we're going to feed to z minus 0.5 now once inside the hole that first move we make is an incremental move from the center to our lead in move okay and now it's the exact same code that we used in the previous segment to produce this hole once I complete that I have to wrap it out of the hole I want to wrap it back to a clearance plane but that needs to be a G90 move so right there on that line where it says G0 Z1 inch I will have to put a G90 on that line so let me make an edit here so when we wrap it out of the hole we want to do that as an absolute move okay so now let's say that we need to do a hole at a different location now I'm going to copy this whole section of code right here I'm going to do a control C put my cursor when I want to paste it and do a control V okay so now I want to do the next hole at X 8 inches but Y 3 inches will be the center point of that new location okay so if I zoom out having copied that exact same code the only thing that's different is the location of the hole in absolute values okay so if I copy that again down below here control V and now I want to go to a whole location that is on the other side of the part X minus 8 let's say Y 3 inches notice I can 
keep producing the same diameter hole just by changing the x y locations of the absolute distance away from part zero okay so i'm going to do that one more time control v and now i'm going to make it x minus y minus 0.3 so now i have the five holes using the exact same incremental code to actually mill the radius but i did not have to rewrite the code for the actual tool paths once i'm inside the hole so that really simplifies your code and speeds up the process of writing your tool paths so i hope that makes sense thanks for watching and we'll see you next video